let David get situated. The scripture this morning, as soon as I turn to it, is from the first chapter of Luke. <coughs> first chapter of Luke. Starting at verse 26. Is that Geneva? No, this is my grandfather. Oh, okay. So, well, then you'll, you'll have the text with you. That's the Thompson Jane reference, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. I'm still getting used to using it. I just I like to have his notes in the margins. Right. And so I don't have to carry the magnifying glass. Uh, yeah. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Let, I think that's enough. How many of you think that it, it feels anything remotely like Christmas? Only because my Moravian star's been up since February, but I decorated, <laughs> I decorated the hallways and the Christmas tree for the All right. But other than, other than that? No, not even in the stores. Okay, David? Christmas specials on the Christmas specials on TV. Especially Charles. Oh. Play that. Yeah, well, I mean, let's let's be honest. Any of us who grew up watching that every year, every time they get, you know, we hear the King James Version being read of the Christmas story, and the angels sing the most famous Gloria in human history. Let, let's be honest. All of us who were baby boomers... You know, hear this little voice in the back of our heads going, and that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. <laughs> I'm getting my tree today, so I guess it'll be Christmas time. Okay. I got my tree out too. All right. It's just a little tree. Right. We are, ha we are having to adjust to the current situation. I remember hearing one time where somebody claimed to have read a student paper that mentioned, you know, that sort of scolded Mary and Joseph for not making reservations ahead at Christmas time when they went to Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. There there's a children's picture book. I think it's by uh, it's either by Patricia Polacco or Jane Yolen. I think it's Polacco. Called 
There was no snow on Christmas Eve. It wasn't cold. It was warm. Tell the truth, it was probably in April or sometime. The traditions that we have come to take for granted almost. And many of them we can't do this year. And a lot of people are having trouble adjusting to that on top of all of the other things that we haven't been able to do this year. One of the things that I posted on my Facebook page, yes, I am a member of the, the biggest cult in the world, I confess. It helps me keep up with people. But one of the things that I reposted was a saying from the theologian Walter Brueggemann, who said that Advent's natural home doesn't begin with celebration or a bang. It begins among people who are hurting and won't keep quiet about it. There's a lot of hurt this year. We all know this. But to quote from one of my favorite Christmas specials, perhaps Christmas, he thought, means a little bit more. <laughs> I admit it, I admit it, I, I admit it, I, I watched The Grinch. The Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play him this afternoon. Uh, yeah, I've got the recording. Okay. It doesn't come from the store. It's not, a it's not in a package. It... It arrives as it arrived the first time round with something so simultaneously ordinary and miraculous as the birth of a baby. What I love most about this time of year is that it helps me recharge my battery. It helps me to remember to have hope. And Victor Frankl, after his stint in I forget which concentration camp it was, was very clear on this, that hope was the one thing that human beings can't live without, literally. And it's not the sort of easy hope that somehow somebody's going to come in and make things all better. It's the hope that somehow we're going to make it through to the end of this. It's the hope that inspires you. You gotta have heart. Miles and miles this year and miles of heart. And the other thing is that, and this is a peculiarly Quaker insight to the whole thing. I mean, you can debate the virgin birth, what it might mean, what it might mean for contemporary people who know, who know full well where babies come from, or what have you. But the important thing is, as, and, this, and this is something that Thomas Kelly, who is a very 
gifted Quaker writer who passed away just as World War II was beginning for this country. You know, as Thomas Kelly would have said, as you grow in proximity to the divine, you come to resemble the divine more. And therefore, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. If you want, if you want to speak in terms that are very traditional, Jesus, Jesus was the product of both Mary and God. And there are going to be places, there would have been places where he resembled each of them. And that's why, that's one reason why Jesus is essentially our pattern, our model in the, in, in the Christian faith. But Quakers also don't believe in setting aside special seasons so much. Because every day is a new opportunity to get it right with God. So every day, every time you come together with God, you are both mother and child. If you want to look at it that way, you, you know, through, through exposure to the Spirit of God, you come to resemble the Spirit of God more. So I leave, I leave us all with this query. What have we been doing to help us resemble God more?